Electric cars may be the indisputable future of mobility. However, at present, there are three factors that are keeping them from going mainstream. Price, range anxiety, and charging infrastructure. Now, until battery manufacturing is localized, unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do on the pricing front. But what we can do is find out whether new age EVs like the Tata Nexon EV Max can be relied upon for intercity travel. To do this, we're taking the EV Max from Mumbai to Pune and back to see if range anxiety is a thing of the past because we'll be doing this on a single charge. Right, now before we set off, it's important that we give this car a full charge. And to do that, I've come to Nerul, to the Tata Motors dealership that's closest to the expressway. It's got a 25 kilowatt fast charger right here, which isn't too fast. A 50 kilowatt one would cut the time by half. I've got about 30 minutes to go before this car is on 100% charge. So for now, there's really not much to do but wait. Right. The first reality check of this trip has been that fast chargers are not nearly as convenient as just having to top up your fuel tank at a nearby gas station. We've got about 390 kilometers of overall range, but what kind of a margin can it do it in and uh, how well it can uh, take us through Pune and back without bringing about range anxiety. So power this up and get going. All right, so we're finally on the Mumbai Pune Expressway. It is one of the busiest arterial corridors in the country. This 94.5 kilometer stretch sees up to 60,000 cars on an average per day. The speed limit has been clamped down for private vehicles to a maximum of 105 kilometers per hour. I can see a range of 370 kilometers on display and there's about 92% battery charge. Unlike internal combustion cars, these give more mileage in the city and less on the highway. The average speed goes up and therefore energy consumption goes up. The energy in an EV is recovered entirely through regenerative braking, of which there isn't much on the highway, unlike it there is in the city where start-stop traffic, while consuming a little bit of energy, also provides you a bit more. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that we will make it back with plenty of range to spare because even right now it's dropped down to 332 and it is dropping rather rapidly. Thanks to these apps like the Tata Power Easy Charge One and the Charge Grid app, you can easily locate the charging stations that lie ahead. What you can't figure out is whether those stations are manned, unmanned, uh, whether they're functional, whether there's a large queue. The Tata One will tell you whether it's you know, the charging station, their own charging stations at their dealerships are occupied. But as for the rest, we just have to go there and find out for ourselves. Make a quick pick stop, an upcoming HPCL pump. All right, so we're here at this sprawling HPCL pump uh, that's right after the main toll gate. And uh, as you can see, it does have a fairly neat you know, a couple of fast chargers. Uh, both of them happen to be 50 kilowatt chargers. Now, everything looks fine. I've topped up the Charge Grid app. I'm ready to charge the vehicle, although I'm not going to. There's this minor inconvenience of there being no power. Uh, we're told that, you know, power outages here are a rare occurrence, but it, as it so happens uh, right now, we don't happen to have any. We ourselves are not going to wait too long because uh, this is just to see if the charging stations are functional. Uh, without any power though, it doesn't seem to matter. So, onward we go. Well, back on the road again. That was a little awkward back there. Uh, no electricity, but seemingly functional charging network. I will give credit to the HPCL guys because that charging kiosk did seem exceptionally well maintained. The patchwork electricity supply makes EV ownership, especially for intercity travel, very difficult. And uh, just watching all those petrol, diesel and CNG cars just sort of drive right past these two lone EVs who were 
just waiting for electricity to kick in. Just you didn't feel like you were part of the future. It it felt like a step back. And now there is about 55 kilometers remaining in the journey. I have plenty of charge left, although I am losing it fairly quickly because uh, the surface elevation on around this ghat section are rising, uh, and that's putting a greater strain on the battery. And I'm really hoping that uh, whatever charge I lose on these elevations, I can regain some of it through regenerative braking uh, on the way down. But just how much of it I'll be able to do and uh, whether it'll be enough, well, that remains to be seen. I'm going to go straight to the Tata Motors dealership in Tathavde, which is just at the outer periphery of Pune. It's just where Pune begins. Can it make it there and back to the Neral dealership comfortably in time with decent enough range to spare so that you don't have to compromise on basic comforts like air conditioning and you don't have to go particularly slowly. Right, time for a quick update. We are just about 12 kilometers away from Tathavde, which is, like I said, in the periphery of Pune. The reason we're turning around is because there is a Tata Motors dealership there, so should you wish to charge pretty much any EV, there is a public fast charger accessible to you over there. We're obviously not going to charge it. My objective right now is to reach Tathavde with 56% battery to spare. So, not too bad. And air conditioning is off. It's not the ideal way to travel. The window down and constantly the slow lane. It's very pre-liberalization, but it is manageable. All right, so we are at the halfway point in Tathavde, Pune, where there's a Tata Motors dealership. And as you can see, a similar 25 kilowatt charger. This dealership and the one in Navi Mumbai is about 110 kilometers. However, I only have about 54% charge remaining, which means I'm likely to consume just whatever remains uh, in this battery and make it in the nick of time if I'm lucky. It's just a straight beeline to Navi Mumbai. Let's see how it goes. But before we reach our final destination, there's one more pit stop to be made. All right, so we're almost at the end of our journey with about 45 kilometers to go before our final destination. Uh, before that, we thought we'd make a pit stop at a petrol station that is exactly opposite to the one we stopped by uh, on our way to Pune. And as luck would have it, there are three fast charging stations here. However, two of them aren't actually working. There's only the Tata Power Easy Charge one. That's a 30 kilowatt fast charging station that happens to be working. Uh, just to reassure you guys, we won't actually be charging the car. We'll still be running on the same charge that is left. Uh, but we just want to see if this works and how quickly one can get a charge. So I've got the app here. All I have to do is out plug this in and proceed now I'd like to show you it just says fetching charging status and we're trying to determine how long it takes to do that because uh, for someone who does intend to charge that could take a while so let's find out All right, it's been about 10 minutes. We've been waiting for this thing to charge, uh, but the charging was not initiated. Luckily, no money was deducted through the app. Uh, but right now, I've just been told that charging has been cancelled. Please try again. Since we're a little short on time, I don't really have the patience to sit and discover if it's going to do that again. So we're going to take this out and head on our way because we do have sufficient charge. All right, so the jury is out on whether that public charger worked or not. For my part, I tried to make it work twice, uh, but there was just no power transmission. Although the power supply seemed to be a non-issue this time. On the plus side, what has really come through is the Tata Nexon EV Max. Because on the way down, I was able to recover almost 25 kilometers of range, which honestly feels like such an achievement after such a long and 
sweaty day. I still have about 129 kilometers to go and only about 45 kilometers till I get to my destination. So, you know, I can drive pretty much the way I want. I was being as conservative as possible because the horror of having, you know, 15% charge flash on your car can be far more severe than the horror of seeing it on your phone. But it turns out my fears were unfounded. The EV space has grown in a way that we've not seen before. We already have cars which claim to have a mileage and range of 590 kilometers. That's the BMW i4, uh, the longest range EV in the country at the moment. There's also the Volvo XC40 Recharge, uh, which has around 480 uh, or something in that ballpark. A BMW owner isn't as likely to rely on that i4 as their sole car. Similarly for Volvo, in fact, when Volvo was entering the country, they were very clear that uh, they are essentially catering to a market where that EV is not the single car in the owner's garage. The EV Max does not fall in that category. In fact, uh, it's quite pricey, but it still falls under a bracket where people are going to look towards it as their all-purpose car. So it's particularly important for cars in the EV Max's range to come through on long distance, fast lane journeys like these. And I'm very happy to report what I've seen so far, it's shown through and how. All right, 11 hours later, we're right back where we started and I'm happy to report that this has been a mission of success. The Nexon EV Max did prove that uh, EVs are good for long distance, long range travel. In fact, we returned with 18% remaining battery and about 50 kilometers of range. Uh, so towards the end, we did make it back comfortably, air conditioning on, cruise control set to 100. So it's not like we were driving particularly conservatively. If you're wondering whether EVs are ready for this, whether EVs are ready for long distance, intercity travel um, and whether you should put your money down on one uh, which can serve all your needs well things are starting to look very good because uh, this does mark a turning point for the EV market uh, with more EV battery developments in the future things are only likely to get much better as for the EV charging infrastructure that's still very much a work in progress <laughs>